Hey everyone, welcome back to the basics of Betaflight. So far, we've accomplished a lot. We've downloaded and installed the configurator. We've installed our drivers. We know how to identify our flight controller. And today, we're ready to move forward. But today's video is very dependent on your previous success and being able to set up everything correctly. And the reason why is we're actually going to install some firmware. If you are having issues with any of the previous steps, now's the time to figure out what's going on. Uh, if something is incorrect, you could potentially brick your flight controller while trying to flash firmware to it. And we definitely don't want that. The whole purpose of this series is to make sure that you're successful. So if you're stuck, hit me up. We'll try to figure that out together. But it's time to move forward. Let's get some firmware in this baby. To get started, open up your Betaflight configurator and connect your flight controller as normal. Once the COM port is available, simply click connect. Now that our configuration is loaded, I'm going to shoot over to the CLI tab because one more time I want to verify my flight controller's target. This is a very, very important step. To do that, I'm going to type in version and hit enter. Now I do have a whole entire video on this. So if you have some questions, please go back into the Betaflight playlist. I'm sure you'll find this particular video. But anyway, this is what I'm looking for right here. The target name, or in this case, it's just simply called Omnibus. This is all I need. I'm going to disconnect and shoot over to the firmware flasher. We'll start on the top and work our way to the bottom. This switch right here, show unstable releases, that's exactly what it is. By turning this on, this is going to show you unstable releases that are currently available for public distribution. Uh, we can pick just simply release. We can pick release and release candidates. So this is going to show you the latest versions of Betaflight. Uh, then we have development and a couple of patches for smart audio. We don't really need to worry about any of this. And quite honestly, this is something that we're not even ready to turn on right now. So let's just leave it off. The second item here is this is the target that you're going to be selecting. And this is what I keep saying is really, really important to make sure you know what version of Betaflight firmware you're actually putting in your flight controller. And that's this selection here. So by default, since I recently flashed this board, it already came up with Omnibus. But when I click this box, look at how many different versions of firmware there is available for Omnibus. And this is consistent with quite a few flight controllers. And that's why it's so important to know what your target actually is. If I flash the wrong firmware, this flight controller isn't going to work. And it's very possible that I could brick it. Whenever you software brick something, it is possible to recover it, but it's a huge pain in the neck. And honestly, if you're watching these videos... It's something you're probably going to need a lot of help with. So let's just avoid that. Be 100% positive on your target and pick that one. Underneath that, you actually have the selection for the firmware version. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick the latest one, which right now, at the time of this recording, is 3.3.3. .3 so we'll just click it. A couple other items down here. No reboot sequence. Some flight controllers, while you're flashing them, uh, will exit DFU mode. Uh, and you would turn this on to help keep the flight controller in DFU so you can flash the firmware. Uh, essentially, if you're flashing and it isn't successful, maybe you might want to try turning this on. Um, it might help. The next item down is full trip erase. And I definitely recommend turning this on. By not completely erasing the system chip, you could have old settings left behind when you flash new firmware, and that can wreak havoc on your Betaflight installation. Every single time you're flashing new firmware, you're going to have to reconfigure the board anyway, so it makes no sense to do anything else other than the full chip erase. Another recommendation, 
that I would suggest having on is just turn on manual baud rate and leave it set at its default rate. We have our options configured and now we're ready to go load firmware online. And I'm going to click this button. The configurator is going to download that particular release and once it's all set the flash firmware button is going to light up. Now if we were successful with our DFU driver installation, all we should have to do is click flash firmware. However, there are some cases and some flight controllers, particularly older ones, where you might have to manually put that board in a DFU mode. Honestly, if this is your first time flashing that board, unless somebody else has experience with it, there's really no way to know what is and is not going to work. So I literally just suggest going through the settings, load firmware, and click the flash firmware option. I'm going to let this run in real time so you can see how long it should normally take. Uh, but as long as everything is correctly set up, this should flash absolutely no problem. If it fails to flash, you can always try it again. If it's continuously failing to flash, you can try manually entering DFU mode and if you're still having problems, you can try turning on or off this manual baud rate. Also the same thing, experiment with turning on or off the no reboot sequences. Uh, as you can see, the firmware flashed really quickly. Uh, we're successful. That's done. Boards flashed. Immediately after flashing the firmware, you want to reboot your flight controller. The easiest way to do it is just simply unplug it and plug it back in. Once the flight controller is reconnected, just bounce back in a beta flight, hit connect, and now you're going to see that your new installation is available and everything in here should look relatively normal. All right, so that's pretty awesome. Looks like we were very successful flashing the firmware to this board. Let's disconnect. There you have it. We just flashed a flight controller. Now we're ready to configure this thing. And in the next upcoming videos, we're gonna start going through all the individual tabs in beta flight. I'm gonna to explain to you what each and every one of the options are. And I'm also gonna show you how to do the setup and configuration. But that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.